Okay, so I just finished cutting down the 8-pin connector to a 6-pin connector. So this is off of a Honda Civic. So I ordered two cluster connectors, one off of an Integra and one off of the Civic. So the Integra is um, a 1994 to 2001, and that gets you your 16-pin. I'm still um, figuring out how to de-pin this one. I think I need more of a special tool than what I used on the Civic. The Civic, I could literally just stick a bobby pin in there and out the uh, wires go. The Civic is off of a 90 to 91. Um, and this was an 8-pin. Like I said, I cut it down. I used my Craftsman's grinder, angle grinder. I uh, ground off um, the last two on the sides. Then I used just a, a little grinding pad and sort of just softened the edges, ground a little bit off. And then as you can see now, um, my 8-pin converted 6-pin fits into the cluster. Um, that was a little tricky to make sure I got it down to the perfect size, but eventually it got there. Um, not too bad. Anyways, so I'll put the wiring um, diagram at the top or you can just go to the link yourself in the description. I was able to get the wires out of the Integra connector so essentially I had to push these white plastic pieces down and I was able to push those um, down on the sides there and then once you do that that frees the little piece of metal that's um, otherwise blocking right there and so then you can stick your tool in the, the holes there and that blue the blue plastic you're shoving it on top of that and pushing putting downward force on it so I'll try my best to show that <clears throat> I'd be pushing in until I'm meeting that um, blue plastic and then pushing down putting that downward force and then it just comes right out so again that's pushing it in pushing it in till it's meeting that plastic there and you're basically just pushing that plastic down to get out of the way this is a crimper and stripper and yeah I need to strip these wires down kind of press down and then twist and then pull down and then you'll see that insulation will come off fairly easily and you shouldn't lose any wires in the process so over here I have just a big box of project stuff I've had for the Acti some fabric from when I did the uh, reupholster um, I still need to I still need to reupholster those headrests. Uh, I don't know why, that was so difficult for me, I just gave up, but anyway. Yeah, I have like a bunch of different projects and stuff that I've been stashing in here, and we've made a dent in some of it, um, but I've been whittling away at stuff slowly. But yeah, with a full-time job and taking college classes, it has been tough to find the time to work on the truck, but I'm doing better recently. Anyway, here we are, we're after this. Vehicle circuit probe. Here we have the six pin connector. There we go. And then this is the sixteen connector. So now we need to use our probe and test everything. Something positive came out of the lawn and garden battery, being a dud for the truck, is that I now can have it indoors and do stuff like this, so I can conduct some electrical testing. So, yeah, I guess like having a spare 12 volt doesn't hurt. So, yeah, what we need to do, is we have the probe here, lay that to the side. We have this little prong here, we'll connect that to the ground cable and then we'll connect these 
to the battery, so red to the positive first, black to the negative, and then connect the ground, and then we can start testing the wires and making sure the, the gauge cluster uh, illuminates. Okay, so then our pr probe light came on, so that's a good sign. Next, we'll connect the ground clamp to the black ground wire, like so. Now we can start testing. Okay, so I was going to bring up the cable chart, make sure that all the things line up. Number four. That was for illumination. Illumination's on. That seat belt. There's turn signal. Brake. That one works. And yellow and green. Majority of them work. So, it's like right hand Ron said, you kind of reach under the dash um, I recommend getting the speedo cable out first. That you can just pinch and try to pull out. And then you can turn the cluster and then you can get at the connector, push down and pull out. And then should be, should just come out. And my hands all marked up. That was a little bit of a struggle, but I eventually got there. So yeah, it's out now. So we can try and do the swap. There you can see the uh, speedometer cable, which we'll have to reroute. And here's the connector, which actually has a little bit more give on it than I thought it would, which is good, because I have some shorter cables that I was concerned about, but it should be, I think, plenty of length. I'm just de-pinning this connector now, um, just because I want to retain as much length on these wires as possible, so that when I cut, you know, I can cut from basically right here off and um yeah these are luckily pretty easy to deep in you just need to stick something in between the plastic in there so i take this piece i get it in between the plastic and then pull on the other side Okay, so I went ahead and wired the six pin connector. I just used the existing wires and the wire connectors. I didn't snip them or anything. Um, and I think this will be plenty of room for this one to reach. So that should be good, nothing to do with that. And then I have for the 16 side, I have two yellow wires, which I wasn't expecting. And then yeah, so I need to snip off all these connectors. Um, then, uh, strip the wire back and then solder these into um, my 16 pin connector which is in the back of the truck. Let me get that. So I've already stripped all of these. Um, I put a tap on the end of the blue wire. I'm hoping I'll be able to just tap in I believe I've identified where the tack um, signal is. I think right hand Ron said it was coming from the C connector, which is behind the fuse um, box. And I believe this is the blue wire that is connected down there. So this is where I'm gonna put my tap and hopefully that blue wire is long enough that it's gonna reach down. And yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, so I was fretting this uh, same color to yellow wires. I just read up on a JDM Gems guide and he said that one is just not needed. Um, apparently you can just leave it unplugged. I'll probably just tape it up and it's not needed. So that solves that issue. So yeah. Otherwise, I guess I will start cutting these now and... Um, 
wiring in. Okay, so I've just put the pigtails in. I'm gonna do a preliminary test and see if <laughs> nothing catches fire. Let's turn the car on. That's a good sign. That's all our lights for ignition. I don't believe it, ladies and gentlemen. We have tack. It does look like the fuel is slowly climbing. So that's good. E brake works. Seat belt. Let's make sure. Boom. No way. We don't have the speedometer connected yet, so we need to do that. I do see the fuel's climbing back up to its original position, so fuel's working. We'll have to make sure temperature goes up as the truck warms. But holy crap. Did we actually do it? Okay, got everything wired up. I'm gonna melt the heat shrinks and um, wrap it all up with some electrical tape and uh, we need to finagle that speed cable, um, but then after we get that, it's good to go. Okay, to get the speedometer cable back in, I had to take this off. Um, there's a bolt right here. When the cluster is out, you can put a ratchet through um, the hole up there, unscrew this, this will drop down, this will let you put your hand up through with this out of the way. So yeah, I think I got it secured enough, I hope. Um, let's go for a test drive and see. Okay, I just went for a test drive. Yeah, speedometer cable's not in ta it's not in enough. Damn, I'm gonna have to fake. I'm gonna have to work that. Uh, I couldn't get enough slack in the line to get it, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. But it's cool to have tack, but now I have no speedometer. So, Ugh. anyway, I'll have to keep working on that. So I wanted to show you guys what's going on down here. So, like I said, that's where we put the tap, that blue wire uh, going down. Put our tap in. Um, then we matched up our 16 pin connector according to the wiring diagram. I will put the JDM Gems um, write up in the description. Shows the wiring diagram that he created. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty easy. You just match up your colors, put them in. Um, this is just basically extra. You don't need it. Um, you can just tape it up and I'm gonna tape it to here just to get it out of the way then we have the six pin connector that was an eight pin that I grinded off um, and I went ahead and just used the existing cables and connect connected that with so much play on this side um, this one comes up and connects to the top and yeah it works with just the the length of the cables that were already there so I figured no sense in cutting these off and splicing wires unnecessarily so the existing wires went into this connector so yeah good to go on this side right now the main problem I'm facing is the speedo cable I did go under the truck uh, pulled as much um, slack as I could up and still nothing um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that yet may end up taking off the bumper and see if I can see the cable from there and pull up. I, I really don't know. I'm not sure yet. It's kind of being a pain in my ass right now, so yeah. But yeah, the, the wiring is pretty simple. I used some solder um, connectors. Just connected everything that way, uh, melted the solder, and then put some heat shrink around each one, and then um, that was good to go. Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what, what it looks like behind here, but the wiring is pretty simple. 
if you watch a couple of the wiring videos like you'll know what you're doing but yeah it's, it's not bad just match all the colors put them in the right spot in the connector well I think I got the speedo cable connected from what I can see when I'm looking through the crevice the very small crevice that there is it looks like it's flush with the back of the cluster so that's as far back in as it can connect so I think given that if the speedometer doesn't come on once we turn the truck on doesn't revert back to its original position I think maybe they may have sent me a botched cluster I don't know because the speedometer cable is really as flush as it's gonna get all right so it just started clicking and then went back from 80 to nowhere Zville. Uh, I don't know what to do. Crap. I've been fighting with the Speedo cable for probably the last 45 minutes. My hand mutilated. Hurts really bad. My forearm too. I had to roll down my sleeves eventually just to try and prevent as much scraping as I can down there. Um, but yeah, I could not get a signal to the speedometer. Then I just felt like I was going crazy and maybe I screwed up the cable. So I plugged in my old cluster and ran a test. And yeah, sure enough, it still works. It gives a signal. So the cables, nothing's wrong with the cable. It just won't connect to the back of the other cluster. So either that cluster is just jacked up or it's just not it doesn't have enough length um, as you can see with my fiddling this piece just fucking broke off so that's lovely but yeah I mean it could just be that this thing is just botched I don't know um, I'm still gonna keep trying I'm not gonna give up okay so I once again disconnected the speedometer cable reset the dial back to zero with the ignition off. Now it's somewhat it's somewhat accurately gauging speed. It's not just like flying all over the place. So at the start of this whole shit, it went to the 80 position. Then it dropped down to like forever. And now and then it was just jumping randomly and now it's like it's touchy as it's moving through the speeds, but it seems like it's actually moving somewhat accurate. I'm going to put my speedometer on my phone and see if we're even somewhat close. I'm hoping we are. Like I was mentioning, it is moving twitchy, but it is still, it's, it's moving now. So that's a step in the right direction. It's been a long day. I'm literally like covered and just like nastiness and this hurts like a son of a Whew. so yeah this has been annoyingly so on the like final step of the project like something always goes haywire uh, I don't know why it's really annoying anyway let's go ahead and see if we're even accurately tracking any speed here I don't know if that's normal where it normally doesn't track in reverse, but anyway, I don't think that's normal. After my testing, it looks like it'll only track accurately till about 40 Ks, any faster speed than that, and it's just totally inaccurate. 
Um, that must be a problem with this cluster because my speedometer cable works fine and I put back in my old cluster just to make sure and yeah it tracks so I don't know but anyway that's super annoying but I guess I can live with it considering it's kilometers anyway it's not really very useful to me anyway I may just end up getting some USB powered uh, miles per hour speedometer and put that on the side I don't know anyway at least we have a tachometer now. I really wish the speedometer worked, but who knows? Maybe if I find a good deal on um, a cluster, I may just replace it and then see if that helps. But yeah, I'm done for now. This project has taken far too long, and uh, yeah, I'm just annoyed. So anyway, I would call this a success, but it's kind of like eh, a half, a half success. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, thanks so much. And I'll see you in the next one.